Okay, let's start. I will not show how to move or how to wherever here in Houdini because it's fairly simple and there's a lot of tutorials about that. This is a relatively advanced tutorial, so I will get through that. But let's start with the beginning and just create a sphere here. And I will create a sphere in Maya as well. And let's see the differences between them. So when you create a sphere in Maya, you can see there's uh, some inputs already. So if you just hit here the shapes, you can see we have now a transform and a shape. So every object in Maya, every geometry object has at least two nodes, which are um, transform and shape. You can see those nodes here in the node editor. And you can see that we have a little bit more. Just get forget about this one. This is the shading group for shading. But we have the transform node and we have our shape. Our shape is what defines our object, where the vertex are and how many are there and all this kind of stuff. And here we have a node, which is the sphere, where we can change um, things about the sphere, how many subdivisions we have in the sphere. And it goes to the in mesh here in the shape. OK, and that's a transform. The transform is what moves the object. It's a group that is above it, and the shape is just a child of that group. It's really, really important to understand that this is just a group. Um, sometimes people don't get the difference between the transforms and shapes that well. So we can just do Control G to do another group and put it like there. And we can parent this shape to the group. Just hitting here, parent. I can spell it correctly, parent. S and R, and now the shape is moved where my parent is, which is a group. And we can do the same thing again. And now here it is. So when I'm moving the object in Maya like that, I'm just moving its parent. I'm moving the group above it. If I want to move the shape in Maya, I can do something like that. And now I'm moving the shape because I'm moving the vertices. I'm not moving the group. As you can see, the group is still here. And now I can rotate from here because I'm moved, I have moved the shape. The same thing happens in Houdini where this group here is a transform and you can go inside, double click in it, and you are in the shape node. So we don't have really a shape node in, in Houdini. You can say that all of this space where I can load lots of nodes, these are the shapes. This is the shape. This is really where uh, my, my object is defined. Right now we are in the geometry context which is the, the one that defines geometry. And I'm sure that you have heard a lot of, uh, of subs and robs and dobs and all these strange names. Well, this is a sub, this is a surface operator, and rob is render operator, and dob is dynamic operator. They call it that way, but just think of it about this is my shape. This is where I do things. As you can see, I already have the same sphere that I have in Maya. I can put the same parameters here. It's exactly, exactly the same. So let me just undo this to get the same thing. And as you can see, we don't have this one. This one is all the context, but we have this one. But if I, I just hit here and create a smooth, you can see that we have now another node right there. We have my polysphere, we have my smooth and the shape. So I can do exactly the same thing in Houdini, creating a subdivide node. And now I'm subdividing. I have exactly the same geometry in both softwares and more or less the same tree, node tree in both softwares. So in Maya, you're used to get rid of all of that. Once you're happy with that, uh, I know that a lot of you are just using Alt Shift D, or you can you can come right here and delete history, and you're doing that a lot of times, a lot of times. Because if you have a really complex tree here in Maya, Maya crashes and Maya doesn't really want that. You want to um, get as few nodes as possible. And that's not what happened, what happened in Houdini. In Houdini, and that's why it's called procedural. And you can you don't have to delete anything. You can have here lots and lots and lots of nodes, and you can all also you can always change this one, the input, and you will have another output. So this is um, why this software is really, really good to do a lot of stuff. And we will try to understand how to use it to 
make a civil-like muscle system just inside Houdini, and that's it. That's it for now. Let's see you in the next one.